Can you hear me all right? This volume good? During the presentation, sometimes I'll drop into maybe accents. Forgive me, I'm no good with accents, but it'll give variety. All right, let's go. If you want to learn something new, my teacher said move to another country. So in 2011, I moved to Bermuda and I started learning. But the first Bermudian to teach me a lesson was 32 years before when I drove a taxi in New York City, 1977 through 1985. And here he is, Mr. Lance Hayward. Whoa! Wonderful Bermudian jazz pianist, blind, moved to New York when he was 50. And I was his regular driver for three or four nights in 1979. And one of the nights, I'm taking him home uptown, and he says, he tells me about something he learned. He said, I thought I knew everything, first bad voice, but I, I listened to Oscar Peterson, and he turned me around. Turned me around, that's a good phrase. I said, why'd you leave the Bahamas? And he goes, Bermuda. I said, oh, I'm sorry, Bermuda. He says, why'd you leave there? He says, couldn't play the kind of music I wanted to play. It was too small. So I moved to Bermuda 32 years later. Me and Americans lived here for 10 years, and he asked me, has the smallness gotten to you? I said, I don't know what you mean. He says, some people can't take it. You have to do things to be big. So I said, what are some things? And here are some of the things I did. Chew stick, place to go. <laughs> Chew stick, let's hear it. I wanted to tell New York taxi stories, which means I had to curse. And there are too many churches in Bermuda, so I said, I can't do it. My wife said, I know someone who told me about a place on Elliott Street. Chew stick, you can curse there. So I went there, told stories, and Deidre was in the audience, and Gavin, Dejeeb, all these people welcomed me. And someone said to me after the story, nice story, cab driver. And I felt at home. Yeah, these people, chew stick, the one place I could go and say the F word, and they cheered me. <laughs> I'd say it now, but I don't think, can I say it? No, I don't want to say it. That's, that spoiled things. All right, this is the back of Dr. Neil Burney, the late Dr. Neil Burney. 2013, I went to him with Challenger Banks, and he went, this should be right side up. <laughs> It's a tiger shark, 11 feet long, that he tags. This is a pole. And we went out to Challenger Banks. He dropped in a boy with a marlin's head attack attached, and this shark attacks the head. Then Dr. Bernie says, why don't you jump in with two of the crew and take a closer look? He says, but you better grab this pole. I thought, you bet I'm grabbing something. He says, if the shark gives you a problem, push the pole into its cheek and push its mouth away from you. He says, won't happen though. 10 minutes later, the shark leaves the juicy marlin head and that's him coming straight toward me. So I remember my instructions. I put the pole on the cheek and I shove the son of a gun away from me. He comes back and I drop the pole. Then Dr. Bernie's on boats, yeah, get out of the water, get out of the water. I come out on the back, I help the other two out and one of them says, did you see the second shark? I said, I don't know any second shark, and as you can see, there are two sharks. I said, what, was, what were you doing in there? He says, I was keeping that second shark off you. And I learned about watching each other's back. Another thing that happens is I go into history to keep big. This is Fort Hamilton, way in the back. There's graffiti, Bradley, 1903 or 1905. Some guy there, bored guy, saying, I was here, human. This is Sergeant George Fisher, God bless him. I interviewed him in 2012. I've interviewed 350 World War II veterans like my father. He was in the first contingent, went to Europe, went to Liverpool. He tells me, he looks at the Atlantic Ocean in Liverpool and says, how can this be the same ocean as Bermuda? It's so gray. He also gets captured. Project Market, Market Garden, a bridge too far, gets put in this prison camp, shot in the leg. And his fellow prisoners say, 
George, where are you from? He says, Bermuda. Bahamas? No. Bermuda. Borneo? No. Bermuda. Never heard of it. This is where I get big every night, so to speak. Uh, my wife laughs. This is Harrington Sound. Up here in the corner, shark hole. Shark hole in the day, shark hole at night. I go in with my snorkel, and these are things I see. In the day, odd little things like sea hares. They're like balloons with, with horns on them, the weird seahorses. And at night, squids. Squids will come up. You turn on a dive light, they'll bounce off of it. They're like pets and lobsters who, if I were smaller, they would eat me. And the weirdest of all happening right now, what the uff? That is a sea cucumber. Coming up to the full moon starting June, July, August, and September, they do this. They go up from being on the surface and they'll raise their heads and they'll go back and forth like they're auditioning for one of the zombie movies. In July, two years ago, I took these. There were 70 of them out of, out of 200, 70 of them were doing this. They were going up, you know, and I thought, what are you doing? What are you doing this? What the hell are you doing? And this, of course, is what they're doing. A hole opens up on their head. Juice spills out of the hole. They may as well be a, a mammal, I think. And they don't have a brain. That's what's amazing. I got it. That's what they're doing. So I'm almost at my end of the time. So thank you for staying with me to see what Lance, Chew Stick, a shark, and a kind of derm can teach an expatriate. Thanks. Do, do, you, do we have any questions? Yes. Okay, on this one. Yes. Thanks. Yes, you yes. seem to have heard many stories from many people. Um, have you ever recorded the stories? Because the voice of people I find fascinating well, in, sure. in their stories. My father, World War II veteran, died in 2003 after an infantry reunion, and I had a tape of him telling me a story. So I didn't want to listen to it because I thought it'd make me sad. Instead, six months later, I listened to the story, and he came alive in the room. So I went to the next reunion with a recorder and a flyer that said, I'm David O'Shea, son of Earl D. Meyer, Company H, 379th of the 95th Infantry. If you want to tell me anything, I'll record it, give it back to your family for free, and I do this in memory of my father. Woo. So, well, as they would say, I don't deserve the applause. They do, but thank you. So that was 350 interviews ago. And since I've come to Bermuda, I went to the National Museum, and Elena Strong, an angel if I've ever seen one, said, we have people in Bermuda who you can record. Gave me Andrew Birmingham. He introduced me to Kenneth Dunkley, Royal Navy, Len Doors, still alive, Caribbean Regiment, about 12 Bermudian veterans of World War II. Most of them are gone now. And they told me stories of what it was to come from 20 square miles and go to Europe. And then come back. And that's a story. All your families have stories. You have stories. An old friend of mine, World War II veteran, who when I first started recording, I said, what should I tell him? What should I tell him? Fred Rockland. And he said, tell him they all have stories and tell him don't piss it away. So think about that. I'm free to co record anybody. If you have a favorite aunt wants to tell something, I'll record it. It's free, and that's what I do. I'm here for maybe another year if I'm lucky. So record the history. Yeah, collect it. Thanks. Beautiful. Thank you. Does, does anyone else have any other questions? Yes. 
sure. I just have a silly question about the sea cucumbers. Yeah. Do they leave the bottom of the ocean or they stand there on the bottom? When they stand on the bottom. Oh, okay. They're like little Stevie Wonder singing a solo. They sway back and forth. If I had time, I was going to put my Sharia more underneath them. They're, my wife says, don't talk too much about them. Otherwise, you'll be known as that guy. Thank you.